Romans chapter 8. I will read from verse 28. The Amplified Version. And we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together as a plan for good to those who love God. God causes all things, all things, to work together as a plan for good for those who love God. And I want to add more so for those who God loves, for all of God's children. Because every father loves his children. If you're a child of God, God loves you so dearly. You are God's beloved son. God loves you dearly and all things must be caused by God our Father who loves us to work together as a plan for good for us because we are his own children. To those who are the called according to his plan and purpose. For those whom he foreknew and loved. For those whom God foreknew and loved and chose beforehand. He also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son and ultimately share in his complete sanctification so that he would be the firstborn, the most beloved and honored among many believers. If you are a child of God, God foreknew you. God loved you. God chose you beforehand. God predestined you to be like his son so that you can be his joint, to be conformed to the image of his firstborn. God has made it to be like Jesus Christ, spirit, soul, and body. I do not live anymore, but Christ lives in me. Christ in me is the hope of glory. I am one with Christ. He is the branch. I am he is a vine. I am his branch, the branch of the vine. We draw from the same source. We have the same component makeup. We are one. I am my savior, a one. I am conformed to his image. I am made like him. He is the express image of the invisible father, the exact manifestation and representation of God. As he is, so am I in this world. Hallelujah. I and Christ are one. His power is my power. His life is my life. His grace is my grace. Out of his fullness, I have received grace upon grace. As he is, so am I in this world. All Christ has, he has given me. I have all Christ has. Hallelujah. I have all Christ has. He is the firstborn. I am his younger brother. Same makeup, same DNA. Hallelujah. Same life, same Zoe, same anointing, same Holy Ghost. Same wisdom, same understanding, same knowledge. Yes, same love. We share all things in common. He is the most beloved and honored. In him, I am God's most beloved and honored. As one with him, I am most loved and most beloved and honored of the Father. Now those whom he predestined, he also called. He called me. I am called. He, those he called... Then he also justified, I am justified, declared free of the guilt of sin. I am no more seen as a sinner, and the guilt of sin he has taken away. Those whom he justified, he also glorified, raising them to a heavenly dignity. Here we see that to be glorified means to be raised to a heavenly dignity. He has raised me to a heavenly dignity. Now, what then shall we say to all these things? If God is for us, who can be successful against us? No one. No one. No one can succeed against me. No one can succeed against any child of God. Who can succeed against us? No one. He who did not spare even his own son, or he who allowed his own son to die for me to live, he who allowed his son to be made a curse for me to carry the blessing. He who allowed his son 
to be made poor, for me to be super rich and wealthy. He who allowed the son to suffer, to free me from suffering. He who allowed the son to carry my sickness and disease away so that I can embrace and carry his health and his life eternally. He who did not spare, save or keep back or withhold his son from death for me to live. How shall he not along with him who died for me graciously give us all things. If Christ was allowed to die for me to live and be blessed, any other person, any other can be allowed to die for me to have whatever I must have to live a fulfill destiny. God did not spare his son, so he's not going to spare anything. He didn't spare his son. He won't spare anyone. Whoever tries to stand in the way shall be crushed. He didn't spare his own son, but allowed him to die for me to live. Anyone can die for me to continue to live and do what I'm here to do. If he did not spare his own son, but gave him up to death for us all, how will he not also along, along with him who died for me to live, allow others for me to die, allow others to die for me to continue to live? How shall he not along with him freely, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge, any allegation, any accusation against me, God's elect, his chosen ones? It is God who justifies us, declaring us blameless. God has declared me blameless. You all say whatever you want to say about me, same material. God has declared me blameless. It is God who justifies us, declaring us blameless and putting us in right relationship with himself. Who is the one who condemns us? Christ Jesus is the one who died to pay our penalty. He has paid. I can never pay again. All of it cannot make me pay for any offense I committed because Christ paid the penalty for my sins. And more than that, who was raised from the dead after he met all the conditions and who is at the right hand of God, interceding with the Father for us, telling Father, I died for promise. Every of his gift I absorbed, his sin I suffered for. His poverty I took away, gave him my prosperity, gave him my blessing, gave him my word, gave him my power, gave him my riches, gave him my wisdom. I gave him my strength, my health, I gave him my honor, my glory, my blessing. All you gave me, I gave to promise, so he must have all. Now nobody can say because everything that could have qualified him from having access to these things I have settled. So there's no reason now why he should have all I paid for. So all of them can do their worst. All things are working out together for my good. God is causing all things to fit in into his plan for my life. And I'm coming out on top of it, everything. I'm coming out. He said, he is right now interceding with the Father for us. Who shall ever separate us from the love of Christ? With tribulation or distance or persecution or famine, lack or want, or nakedness or danger or sword? Just as it is written, and forever remains written, for your sake, we are put to death all day long. We are regarded as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors. How they regard the same material, we are more than conquerors in spite of all these things. In all these things. So I thank you, Father. That's why he says in all things, give thanks. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. And gain an overwhelming victory through him who loved us. So much that he died for us. For I am convinced and continue to be convinced beyond any doubt that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present and threatening, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other greater thing will be able to separate us from the love, from the unlimited love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus Christ our Lord, he has died for promise to live. I'm going to leave. And no, 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 no power of fear can stop me. Jesus Christ died for me to reign. I'm going to reign. No power of fear can stop me from reigning. Christ died for me to dominate. I'm going to dominate. No power of fear can stop me. He sent me to stop anything after man's destruction. Jesus Christ sent me as his faithful ambassador to stop whatever is after man's destruction. To preach the good news to all everywhere. He sent me to bring healing, liberty, and restoration to all. He sent me to raise, build, and plant all as his ambassadors 
on his living mission everywhere and restore all things at all costs and by all means according to the heavenly pattern. There's nothing in all of creation that will stop me. The world will hear. Everyone destined to death by the devil will be rescued. Those destined for life by God will not be killed by any power. Whatever is meant to destroy them will be stopped. And I declare right now, everything targeted to destroy you, I declare them stopped right now in the name of Jesus Christ. It's a new day for you. Sicknesses are healed. Diseases are removed. Every evil is broken against you. I cast them out right now. Because of Christ who died for you to live, I proclaim your liberty from death, from poverty, from the hand of the devil, from every evil trap of the wicked. I proclaim your liberty from every evil trap of wicked men and women, agents of the devil who are standing for the devil. I proclaim your liberty from every evil, destructive power and tendencies in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now I release you into his place, into his plan, into the exact position God has prepared for you. I release you into your place in destiny. Live and not die and declare the works of the Lord in the precious name of Jesus Christ. I proclaim you blessed from today. The blessing of God that makes rich and removes sorrow will work for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. People that thought your case is closed, you will help them in this life. In the name of Jesus Christ, your story is changed forever. Be blessed. It's a new day. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Remember, if God be for you, can be against you. There's no power that can be against you. They might try, but they can't. If God be for us, who can be against us? If God did not spare, we told our keep back his only son. For you to leave, he will give up any to keep you alive. I don't care how many are ganged up against you. They will fail. You will succeed in this life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I speak to you, you are a success. You are a celebrity. You have heavenly dignity. You are free at class. Live and not die and declare the works of the Lord everywhere. It is well with you. Be blessed. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Peace.